What's up, everyone? Welcome to Eyes Closed with Bishop Briggs. Hello. How's it going? How are you? I am great. Thank you. I mean, just looking at your beautiful face. How, oh can, gosh. how can I not be? That's very you know, kind. It is. Joy? You have set up an amazing lighting. I just want to, we have to tell everyone that, that there is amazing lighting going on. Um, but thank you. I mean, I work, I work with what I had, you know, <laughs> I wish I could say this was totally my idea and that was mine, but well, I'm very, no. very thankful for it. It saved me today. So thank you. Amazing. Yes. Okay. So before we kind of start, I, I first heard your new album champion when I was walking down the street by myself, it's kind of getting dark, which like for a woman, not always like yes. amazing, you know? Oh, yes. Um, and then I think it was tattooed, tattooed in my heart. Um, and I just got this feeling, you know, when you feel like you're in a movie yes. and you're like, oh yeah, this is, this is a movie. This is the soundtrack. And now it's just like, oh yeah. Like what? <laughs> feeling really like, oh, you know, really This tough is all the goals because it's so true as a woman. Yeah. Like it's crazy that like yeah. we, when it's 7 PM, we're like, well, yeah. can't have my headphones in. It's like, oh, that's exactly. insane. Yeah. That's still something that hasn't changed yeah. in a safety thing. Exactly. Um, so that makes me very, very happy. Thank there you. you go. Thank you. Um, yeah. And so I was completely immersed. Uh, maybe I shouldn't have been as <laughs> oblivious to my <laughs> other circumstances. No. Um, it's worth it. Yeah. You yeah. survived. Oh, yeah. yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Here I am. <laughs> this is what happened. Yes. Um, so I, I, while I felt that way, I felt really positive and, you know, grooving and feeling myself. Um, I know that for you, the record release day is actually kind of heavy. Yes. Can you talk about what happened on that day? Well, I didn't really realize until the release day that everything I talk about in therapy is going to be out in the world. <laughs> right. And so um, I had all of my crew and band, you know, like high-fiving me and being like, congrats. Oh, my gosh. Like, wow. Like, I really felt it. And I was like, oh my God, <laughs> like, and I completely realized that everything ever uh, was out there for, for me. And, um, you know, it felt important with this album to really not paint myself as a perfect person because I'm not. And so that was scary as well. You know, there wasn't um, hiding behind my own metaphors and poetry. It was really direct. And, uh, uh, so yeah, so it was definitely bittersweet. And, and it was also not only that it was, um, the realization that, you know, it is a heavy album and, and although there are lessons learned and there are, um, moments that felt really triumphant, um, definitely in hindsight, uh, I, it still was a lot to do and it was still like an emotional journey. Um, so to kind of feel like I was out of it and, you know, um, and maybe not as out of it as I had wished, you know, or had hoped that I was at that right. point, um, was, it was a lot and I was in the middle of tour, but it was very, it was very, it was very happy, but it did, it did have a little bit of a bittersweetness yeah. just because of the context of what the album was about. Right. Of course. Yeah. Um, and so you work with different producers this time around. Yes. Is that right? So what what do you think, if you could sum up, like, their most important contribution to the album? Or Ooh. maybe, like, a particular song where you think, wow, that song would have really turned out different if it hadn't been for that person? Ooh. I think all of them added so much. That's my favorite thing about collaborating is that I truly feel like when you – work with people that are so great it only you know pushes you to be a better songwriter and um and to add more ideas and um even with tattooed on my heart uh that was uh johnny coffer who produced it and uh the first thing uh he was scrolling through some of these tracks that he was working on and uh I heard the intro, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and I was like, what is that? And he goes, oh, it's, yeah, it's nothing, it's nothing. And he goes on to the next one. And I think sometimes like musical geniuses are that way where they kind of like live in a cave of their greatness Absolutely. and they, yeah. and it isn't until like, you know, 
someone like me comes in and is like, this is so incredible. And they've like never heard that, you know, like they've never like played it for people or they've just like, they've just continue creating and they don't really have, um, a lot of moments to just share. Um, so that's how tattooed on my heart came about. And, uh, it was completely, um, like burst from hearing that I was just so inspired. I was like, no matter what, even if, you know, we don't, do anything with this song like I need I felt like completely inspired and compelled to write over it Mm -hmm. I just love those background vocals they get me (laughs) oh totally right oh totally they get me yeah I I mean I so for me I'm a person that's like um melodies before lyrics I know that a lot of people are the 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 opposite okay for me so what I really love about that song is just how melodic it is and then like the like piano that's like sort of I don't even know how to describe the style. It's kind of like nostalgic, sort of like. Thank you. Um, yeah. Yeah, it, the, it definitely has that old school feel to it. Exactly. Yeah. Which, okay. Yeah. Amazing. So, although I love that song, I love Jekyll and Hyde probably just a tiny bit more. <gasps> really? It's hard to describe. Oh, yeah. Yay. And what I notice is, is that. Um, you, you look so happy while performing it. I saw, you know, <laughs> Jimmy Kimmel and, and all that stuff. Um, but, I mean, it's a it's a dark song. It sounds yes. dark, too. So when writing it, were, were you thinking about how, like, how it would translate live? Well, I, I felt like before I knew it, there kind of was um, this album before me um which I wasn't expecting um I wasn't um out trying to write an album I just was totally doing a purging of the soul and uh but I had this one track in my head um that was this whisper and like snaps <laughs> and um and it sounded insane like in my head it sounded insane but I just was like I think the only thing missing if this is actually an album and if I do actually release it the only thing missing is just kind of like that creepy song that is like uh I think that's the one thing um that I do want to add so I went into a session with uh Joel Little uh and Kay Flay uh, who's one of my close friends, and uh, I was, we, we were just throwing around, you know, ideas, and um, I was telling them about this creepy thing, and the way the song kind of came about was really in separate parts, um, and uh, I love uh, starting any session with uh, hearing, like, organ sounds and really? like just riffing over it and so I asked uh Joel to play some organ sounds and that's how the intro came about right. that was just riffing um and just uh before we knew it we kind of compiled it all together but I was describing how it felt like this Jekyll and Hyde uh you know the person that I was with it felt like two very different versions and uh what I love about you know someone like Kay Flay being in the room she said that you know we could we could kind of have like a, a moment with it where we make it an adjective you know Jekyll and hiding sure. me you know and it's yeah so Smart. so I feel like that <laughs> type of enhancement yeah. uh just brings things to the next level you know yeah. and um and and even if no one connected with it no one resonated with it it means a lot to me that mm. I do, yeah. you know, and yeah. that it, I feel like it represents the story that I'm trying to tell. Yeah. Um, so yes, it is dark, but it is painfully fun to perform. It's so I fun. Can tell. It oh is God, so I fun because it. it is, um, it is the irony of that song. And we, you can read our emails when we were uh, sending each other like the demos um from our session (laughs) as we said the irony is it feels a little bit like Jekyll and Hyde because there's so many different parts you know in it so many different sections um that it really feels like all these different characters are coming out in the song so I'm really really proud of that one Mm. yeah oh my god you should it's such a gem I love it thank you um and then I mean another track okay I tried um I have to say like the way I experience it is like, okay, you get to the end of it and you, um, 
you pretty much get your heart broken by that song. Like it's so, uh, it's so, um, I mean, it's so emotional. And then, and then like, that's it. The record is over. And then you're just kind of like there to, to deal with your feelings all by yourself. And it's, now uh, you it's know, heartbreaking. Now you know how I felt. Yeah. <laughs> yes. was, that's exactly how I felt. Yeah. So was that a conscious decision to, to put it, with a placement uh, um, to put it as the last song and then to kind of um, leave it at that. Well, it felt like the perfect summary of how I found peace with that painful time in our relationship, mm-hmm. you know, was that knowing that like I gave my all. Um, and uh, it's uh, that song uh, ended up staying as a demo um, I was crying while I was recording that. Um, and what you're hearing is just, uh, the first time I sang it and I came out of the room and I was like, well, that wasn't, you know, that wasn't great. I and heard, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, and, uh, and then I, I left and I, I went to London to, um, try and write and, um, and I got sent the demo And, uh, I heard it first when I was back in LA, um, and I was in my car and, uh, I put it on, um, and I just started bawling. (laughs) Yeah, I I just started bawling. Um, and it really, you know, I think why that song is so special to me in, in a lot of ways is because, uh, you know, my goal for everything I do with this album from the artwork to the title was, um, to not hide. And, uh, so to close off the album feeling completely naked, um, it felt, uh, important, you know, and, uh, just for me as an artist, um, but also as a human and, and it did feel like, um, a way to share, uh, how I felt at the end of it, you know, um, which was that I tried and, um, and sometimes that's all you can do to comfort yourself is knowing that you've tried your hardest, um, to make something work. Um, and, uh, yeah, but I'm thankful that you resonated with it. Mm, Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. And I think that's, yeah, I'm curious how that's going to tie in with like the next thing you're going to do, which obviously you mm. just put out this oh, gigantic I've, project you know, of I'm an album. I'm a bit of so. a, I'm a workaholic, so I've already been thinking some things. Right. Yes, so I've already been thinking some things. I'm not going to dig in too much into no. that because I, I feel like we need to, we need to properly like appreciate the moment yes, and yes. everything that's happening around And the changing. turnaround was pretty quick too, mm. you know, like, totally. I, and I, it felt important to keep it fresh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I'm not sure how we're doing for time. Uh, yeah, it's great. Uh, yeah. Okay. Cause that, cause depending on that, I'm going to skip a couple of questions, okay. but I think we can fit them in. Okay. Then, um, another question I wanted to ask is I love the whole, like continued storylines in music videos. Oh, so, yay. I mean, between champion and tattooed on my heart, do you think there's, there's any room for like another part or something Ooh, like that. I have would you thought about love, that? I have thought mm. about it. Um, I would love that. Um, I wish I could afford Tim Mattia again, who is the director. Right. Okay. <laughs> I wish I could afford him again. I mean, crowdfunding. I know, know, I know. Yeah, I, yeah, you're right. I should just start. Um, I'll just start asking for money at the shows. Yeah, people get into <laughs> that, man. You know, I think uh, I think uh, you yes. might be onto something. No, I would love that. A chapter mm. three. I, I mm. definitely. I definitely would love that. And um, we do discuss collaborating all the time. My budget constraints <laughs> do always sure. come in the way of our loving relationship. But yes. um, but yeah, but I would love a chapter three. I don't okay. know which song. Ooh. Yeah. What do y'all, what do y'all, your I fans know. think? I don't, I don't know. know. Those are another yeah. favorite. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then another, another question, which that's from like a, a an older interview that I watched um, that you did. Makes me nervous that you just laughed. No, <laughs> <laughs> like don't, what's on the paper? Don't be, don't be. Um, I'm just wondering, um, what happened to your song Netflix and Chill? Oh, oh my gosh! Um, it uh, passed away with the people that made it with me. <laughs> 
Oh, you're I, stomping on my heart. <laughs> <laughs> I feel, okay. I mean, that's that's a shame. And, and that's it. Case closed. For the closed. best. For like, the best. Yes. Case closed. Rest in peace. But okay. I will, but I will right. maybe make another one. Like in a similar vein. Yeah, similar of. vein. Yeah. Because yeah. I, I do like that concept. And I did uh, text someone that. Text someone. Wait. Text someone that you're going to do it? No, I said. Or well, t- well, I guess. Text yeah, someone that, Netflix I, and chill. I said Netflix and chill, question mark, which I think implies to do it. Sure. If we're talking about doing it. Okay. But. Anyways, yes. Right. So I so I'm saying there is a song in there. Yeah. Um, you know, another version that I can create on my own. Okay. Yeah. Stay tuned yes. for that one. Yes. Okay. Um last one. Yes. In the spirit of Christmas and holidays. Yes. What's what's the best gift that you've given and received? Oh so I asked my I asked my flatmates that uh last week. And it was actually, re- we all had to think about it really hard. Oh, gosh. Okay. Best gift I have received is, oh, it would be like time with my sister. Like being very silly. <laughs> and we get to do that at Christmas time. Right. And then best gift I've given. Okay, I'll do the theme of my sister. Yes. Um, it wasn't appreciated at the time. Um, and I don't even think it was for Christmas, but. I feel like it was as good as a Christmas gift, right. but it was a, this is when she was in college and it was, and I thought this was an incredible idea and I really built this up. Mm-hmm. It was a painting. I had a painter, I had a painter paint a photo of Drew Barrymore for her to hang in her dorm. She never hung it up. Shock. She, she claimed she was a Drew Barrymore fan. I need some context here. What? Okay. Okay. Yes. <laughs> Anyways, continue. I still stand by that being the best gift I gave uh, because I had no money at the time, yet still <laughs> hired you a painter. Hired someone. And yeah. it was her CoverGirl commercial where she's like this. I, d- I don't remember. I don't remember what that was. Not a true Is fan. it from the, is it from the 90s? No, it's not no, from the 90s. No, no. Oh, it, okay. it was like 2011. Oh my God. That was like post, um, uh, what's the Adam Sandler movie? Oh yeah. 50 First Dates. Yes. Oh, long past. Yeah. Okay. I um, sense some judgment in your eyes. I mean, but <laughs> fine, not, fine. It was not a great at all. gift. Not at all. I mean, I, yeah. If, if, um, if you know that someone is <laughs> Drew's biggest fan and given your given your financial situation yes. yeah absolutely right i mean i would um, a painter yeah, yeah yeah but i think it was a little too lifelike uh, oh yeah it was oh. very real is it when like when people get tattoos of people and yes. the faces look a little creepy well i mean she would maybe have said that i thought she looked beautiful wow yes is that painting still around um anywhere <laughs> <laughs> uh, so well um, my sister is here and she seems very There's embarrassed by this whole thing. Yeah. Can you imagine if like in some person's attic, like they got it at some sort of a I can only hope junkyard it's sale. Can you imagine? I feel like it's in a mansion there? in Bel Air. There you go. In yeah. Drew's first name basis in Drew's home. I think that sounds really um <laughs> feasible yeah, let's, yeah thank you so much yeah let's um let's say that that's exactly what's happening yes and um, absolutely kudos for that creative gift thank um, you so much i would have been stoked i would have been thank you absolutely yeah. thank you so much going nuts you say that until you receive it so possibly yeah <laughs> yeah it was large it was like oh this. yeah dimension oh lifelike I don't know what else to say, <laughs> so I guess just. <laughs> I've never told anyone about that, but. I mean, that's a great story. I was a I'm bit scarred. It. I had to travel with it. <laughs> what? On a plane? <laughs> On a plane? Like, did it go Yes, and I had it wrapped. Yes, and I had it oh wrapped my goodness. for her okay. to unveil. Oh, my God. <laughs> I feel like I want there to. This is like documentary style like I wish that <sighs> there was proof of that I know okay I'm just gonna have to take your word for it yes yes Bishop have an awesome show tonight thank you so I much I can't wait to see you and Yee. champion is out everyone stream it buy it uh subscribe what else yeah yes just to be enjoy the music um because it's an awesome record thank you thank, thank you, you so much thanks bye, bye.